Kia ora everybody, welcome back to the podcast. My name is Te Honi Tuna, I'm your host, this is Creative Curiosity, and today we're going to be talking about uh, art and how to come up with your own style. Um, this is something that I learned in high school, in my last year of high school, 2009, and it was um, it was pretty profound actually how I sort of learned about it. Um, if you studied art uh, at high school here in New Zealand, you'd know that in your first senior year you do two art boards uh second year you do two art boards again and in your third year you do three art boards and um it was actually surprising to me but for my first two senior years i didn't know that the whole purpose of it was to find out your own style or to figure out your own style and how you do that is you look at artist models with artwork that you like and from that work you replicate it you use that style to paint uh, different subject matter in my case it was or in our case at Whakatane High School it was painting game pieces like chess pieces and things like that and in my third year I did portraits so I took photos I got my sister to take photos of me with um, Māori weaponry so patsu taiaha and stuff and I painted those portraits in styles of artists that I like and at that time uh, I had two artist models I think and one of them was Ray Ching who's a Kiwi artist and Sean Barber who's an American artist and from painting in their styles at the beginning it was explicit which is a term that uh, my teacher at the time taught me about Uh, her name was Mrs Brooking or Miss Brooking and what she meant by that was the style is pretty much exactly the same style as your artist models. You try not to tweak much at all. Um, And then as you move, progress through your artboards, by the end, um, your influence from those artists should be implicit. So it should be subtle. It should be an amalgamation of uh, however many artist models you have, in my case two. And from that uh, mashup of styles, you end up creating... A style that's different, a style that is uh, a bit more unique, um, and that's how you, that's one way or the way that I find the best to come up with your own style. And a few things to consider, I would say, would be first make sure that the artist models that you find are artists that you actually like, artists whose work that you actually like. Um, second, um, make sure that when you're duplicating their style or you're you're copying their style make sure that when you share that work um, that people know that it's inspired from these people and like don't pass it off as your own style don't pass it off as an original piece of yours if it's a direct copy and just let people know that like you're you're learning you're trying to figure out your own style you're using these people as inspiration and that's cool in my opinion that's cool um, what I don't like is when I see artists who very obviously copy another artist's work uh, and then they don't either, one, credit them or two, pass it off as their own and say that it's their own original style, own original work, when it isn't. Um, <clears throat> and it's it's really just uh, a waiting game uh, in terms of developing your own style. Um, so that's just the style, that's the style part. And then um, another aspect to think about is subject matter. So what it is you're actually drawing or painting or whatever. Are you going to be doing portraits? Are you going to be doing landscapes? Are you going to be doing graffiti? Um, you know, Are you going to be doing fantasy art? Who knows? Um, <clears throat> and that's another thing to consider too when you're looking for artist models. Look for artist models for not only style but um, subject matter and then another layer beyond that if you want to make your work powerful in another way is to look for artists whose work have um, deep meaning and have meaning that is relevant to things that you believe in to values that you hold for example um <clears throat> One of my papers that I studied at Wintick in Hamilton in my second year, it was a, a video paper. I can't remember the exact name of it. But um, 
previous to that, I, I didn't really pay too much to having meaning or having deep meaning behind my works, having um, conceptual pieces. I My main focus was making artwork that looked cool. Um, but in this paper, I learned um, the power of art, the power of symbols, the power of meaning, um, and how to imbue all of these meanings into your artwork and make it say something. And that's one of the things, one of the powerful things about art is it it can say things um, in a way that you can't say verbally sometimes. Um, an example of one of my pieces that I did was last year. <clears throat> uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or on Facebook, I'll put it up right here, the piece. Uh, but this piece, um, like if you look at it, like it looks like a pretty strange combination of imagery. So it's like a naked man walking through a, an aisle in the supermarket. But um, this piece, um, it was about uh, Tipuna Tamahai from Te Whanapunu, And it was about placing him in today's context, um, walking through an aisle. And some of the meaning behind it was, it was about juxtaposing uh, the stories that we hear of our Tipuna and the stories that we do hear about them, they're usually only, you know, the big amazing feats or triumphs that they've um, overcome, things of that nature. And I really wanted to have this artwork talk about the mundane, everyday things that, you know, we do as as people, you know, like going to the supermarket, um, doing the laundry, washing dishes, you know, just all of those little things and one of the meanings behind this was um, about becoming a, a great tipuna you know we, we think about as Māori we think about our tipuna we look up to them and I wanted to talk about um, you know why not look up to our you know people who are alive right now you know and think about the fact that one day you will be a tipuna, you know, generations from now, um, your great, 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 great grandchildren will think back, you know, on you, if, if they've been taught about you, if they've been told about you and, and learn that you're a great tipuna. But I wanted to be talking about, um, you don't have to be great just for doing amazing feats. You can be great from just doing small everyday things because those small everyday things are the things that link and make all of those big, great achievements possible. And I had a little quote also in my, I had a little write-up. That went with it and um, talked about, you know, maybe life is not only about um, the big achievements, but it's also about the small everyday um tasks that we complete as well so that was one of the meanings another meaning was um it was about <clears throat> um not it was about sort of about the afterlife and how as moldy you know we, we think about the afterlife as, as as a people you know as different different cultures you know you think about religion you think about the afterlife and you know, some meanings that you get from them, you learn about, um, you know, the life that you live now determines how your afterlife will be, if you believe in that. And what I wanted to talk about in this painting as well was why not do amazing things now, you know, live a fulfilling life right now, instead of just waiting for the afterlife. But, um, you know, the reason I say all of these things is um, really just to try and illustrate and explain the power that art has. And I only know all these things and can do all of these things from studying other people. And through studying other people, other artists, uh, other ideas, you can 
slowly take elements from each artist that apply to you or that pertain to you and slowly piece all of those different threads together and make your own tapestry (laughs) tapestry um you know a tapestry that's a little bit more unique to you so i hope you fellas gained some value from this i hope i made sense it was a bit of a ramble but i think you fellas get the idea um also i'll just encourage you to um try not to follow trends i see a lot of people who do artwork that is trendy um it's cool if you love it but yeah i would really encourage you to do work that you think is cool and share that um because the people who will eventually follow you for that work will be there for that work and not there for just trendy stuff uh but anyway um that's been it this is creative curiosity i'm your host my name is Dehoni Nitsuna. um see if i was in the next one Kia ora. <laughs>